All right. Looks like we're on the record. Good morning. Good this morning. is the, this is the time and place set for an original hearing for Alexander Wardle. Is that you, sir? Yes. Okay, Alex. Um, Mr. Wardle is your number two four three five zero one. Is that yes, correct? Yes. All right. Okay, Mr. Wardle. Um, there are a few preliminary matters. Um, um, that I want to address before we proceed with this hearing, okay? okay. Um, there's obviously some individuals present um, for this hearing. Um, I know that they have been working with our victim coordinator, um, so I think they have an understanding, but we're gonna talk about what this hearing is today and what it is not, okay? okay. Um, before we proceed, I'm gonna need to take, I'm gonna need to swear you in, okay? So if you can raise your right hand. Do you swear the information you provide today will be truthful and accurate? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead and put your hand down. All right, so um, this is an original hearing for three cases. Um, it looks like we are here for a 2019 case of aggravated assault and criminal mischief, um, a 2018 case of aggravated assault and criminal mischief, class A misdemeanor um, on the criminal mischief, a 2021 attempted possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person, which is a third degree felony. Does that sound accurate? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, the guidelines for all of those offenses are 22 months um, with a sentencing guideline date of February, February 10th, 2024. Um, it looks like you have 403 days of credit for time served on these particular cases while you were incarcerated. Um, looks like probably probation jail sentences. Does that sound accurate? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so I wanna make sure, now you received seven days notice of this hearing, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you receive your blue disclosure packet? I did. Okay. Have you had a chance to review that? I did, yes. Did you have any questions about your packet specifically, or no. are you ready to proceed today? I'm ready to proceed. Okay. We did receive some late disclosure, um, two emails, which I asked them to forward to your case manager, and I believe you should have received those copies this morning. Is that yes, accurate? Yes, I did. Okay. Traditionally, you are entitled time to review those. Um, and so I wanted to find out if you're willing to waive notice and proceed with this hearing today. That's totally fine, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, I just also want to let you know that I am going to be looking down and taking some notes, okay? So if I pause and it's, you know, okay. it's, it's because I'm, I'm trying to capture part of this hearing, okay? Yes. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the current offenses for which you were in prison, okay? Um, the board is aware that there are charges that are currently in screening um, related to an incident um, that resulted in the death of Ms. Morris in February of, of this year, okay? Um, I did in fact check last night. There are no current charges in the court. However, they remain in screening. Um, the board, uh, you know, has no control over the district attorney's office, um, you know, and oftentimes it takes a while for the screening the screening unit to get through those cases. So the board is aware and takes note that you may have possible new criminal charges related to that incident, okay? Um, however, we're not gonna be discussing that incident today. Um, we're gonna be discussing the cases for which the board has jurisdiction, which are the three cases that I've outlined, okay? okay. Um, but I do wanna let you know, um, and maybe toward the end of this hearing, I'll kind of explain to you what, what could potentially happen um, depending upon, you know, um, if new charges are filed or if they're not, okay? So um, with that, um, this is a public hearing, um, so I want you to be aware. Um, we did not receive information that the victim in your current cases of board jurisdiction wanted to be present or speak. Um, I believe that's accurate. However, they may be online. Um, so I just want you to be aware that this is a public hearing. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything before we proceed? You, you clear on the process? Yes. Okay. All right. So it looks like you arrived in prison um, May 17th, 2023. Um, this is after you were given multiple opportunities at probation. Yes. Um, looks like you revoked and restarted multiple times. Four uh, times, I believe, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, ultimately, the courts revoked your probation and committed you to prison. All right, and so what we do is we, we take all of your cases and we combine the guidelines, and so that's where we come up with your, your guideline sentence of the 22 months. Okay. All right, so um, now in your blue disclosure packet, um, I believe you received the information that we have from the pre-sentence reports. Yes. Um, 
So we're going to talk a little bit about those, but I'm also going to talk about um, some other some other issues as far as your assessment, what, what you've been doing in prison, what you know, what you're planning um, to do in prison. Okay. So um, the first case, let's see, the first case let's talk about is case number. One eight one nine one three one eight three. Um, this is um, th so you're familiar, obviously, with that with that case. Do you want to? Did the the facts that were listed in the the pre sentence report accurately outline what occurred in that offense? Is that the prior case in 2018 or 2019? It's the 2018 case. Okay, mo sorry, mo both cases were accurate. Yes. Okay. So um, let's talk about talk about this. So this was. This was a girlfriend that you were residing with, correct? Okay. Um, so can you tell me a little bit, the, the first offense occurred in November of 2018. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me kind of what led up to that incident on that date? Um, it was, uh, unfortunately I was in active addiction and uh, the relationship was uh, spiraling and uh, It just it just wasn't going well, and I um, mostly due to my fault. Um, find uh, and you know I knew it wasn't going well, and um, uh, we should have separated. And I was I was kind of out of control, and um, uh, I believe that one it just. Um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, there was really no excuse for it. It was, um, it got physical and uh, I should have been in control. And I, I just, uh, there was no, there was no excuse for my actions. It was, it was, uh, I, you know, I was in, I was, you know, high and, um, and things weren't going my way. I was, you know, um, I mean, you, you've read the report. It, it, it's it's kind of um, clear what happened, and I, I regret it immensely. And, um, yeah, it's, I mean, that's, I don't really have, you know, I don't know. Um, I read through the blue packet, but I don't really remember mm -hmm. that day, you know, the, the events play by play, but it, it um, yeah, that's, so, so, what were you under the influence of? Uh, methamphetamine. Okay. Um, the report notes that you had punched her, you had choked her, you had strangled her. Is that accurately reflected? Yeah. Um, yeah, from what I remember of it, yeah. So, so you saying you don't remember? I mean, I remember it. I remember uh, at one point I was trying to leave, and and uh, and I I did attempt to de-escalate the situation. Um, and it, it just kept kind of escalating, and I and I did. I grabbed her by the neck and, and tried to get her out of my way. And uh, that's that is one ins um, that I remember. Um, so I yeah yeah I, I I suppose that could be correct yeah. So the 2019 case um, occurred December 2018. Um, looks like a similar um, situation. Methamphetamine was involved. Is that accurate situation? Okay. Um, the 2021 case, uh, it appears that you were a fugitive at this time, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that case and, and the weapons that were involved in that case? Um, that one... I don't know if you want to hear the story leading up to it. Um, it doesn't. Um, the reason I was a fugitive, I was just, I was spot like that was at the end of the spiral. I was, you know, uh, running from APMP, and um, uh, I was, I was very close to completing. And uh, COVID happened and kind of dismantled my business, and uh, and so that year I kind of I lost it, and uh, and I was homeless and running and and. Uh, and I had a knife on me, and that was, and uh, uh, yeah, the marshal service they they got me, and and I had a, uh, yeah, and I had the knife on me, and and uh, and I talked with them about it, and yeah, so. 
Okay, so it, it, it appears that you also had an airsoft pistol? Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, so what was the purpose of having those weapons? Um, the, the pistol I was uh, holding for a friend, if that that's, sounds ridiculous, but that's why I had it. I usually don't. Uh, I had the knife for work, and, and the pistol was just, yeah. So when you say holding for a friend, was that d drug related? No, or? no, he's, uh, I was just holding it for him. He, he was also homeless and didn't have anywhere to put it, and it held some kind of importance for him, so I, I just had it for him. So it wasn't um, to be perceived as uh, as a, a no. genuine real weapon. I mean, no. okay. Okay. All right. So um, in your packet, it uh, included the information with your LSR and R assessment. Um, so that's uh, an assessment that determines risk and needs. That currently scores intensive. It looks like that was completed in February of this year. Um, intensive overall risk. And so basically what that means is not you per se, but people who score similarly are at an, a more intensive risk of reoffending. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if your case manager has had the opportunity to go over that with you. Okay. So essentially what that does is it identifies multiple areas uh, and scores them, you know, very high, high, medium, um, based on your need um, and it looks like you score high in uh, almost all of the categories um, with the exception of companions you score very high and then medium in your antisocial pattern or behavior okay. so um, normally treatment will identify certain areas of need and then there's targeted treatment to help address those risks Okay, so that would be when you're working with a case manager and you're coming up with a case plan for treatment, they're probably going to recommend some treatment, cognitive behavioral treatment that's going to address some of those risks to try and reduce some of that risk. Okay. okay. All right. Um, again, that's something that your case manager would um, certainly be working with you on. Okay. Um, so what, tell me a little bit about um, kind of what led you into your substance use history and when that kind of all started? Um, uh, I think it started early in high school and uh, it kind of it escalated very quickly. Um, I started using marijuana and then, uh, uh, and then it went from that to uh, I started using Adderall and then um, Shortly after that, the person that I was getting that from, I couldn't get it anymore. And I think about 2012, 2011, I uh, started um, intravenously using methamphetamine. And then it was just, uh, and at the risk of using uh, a, a terrible term, you know, I was functioning addict for like a few years, you know, for like, maybe eight or nine years, and then, um, well, no, probably, yeah, and then uh, uh, I started getting in trouble. Uh, about 20, um, 2013, I got locked up, and then I quit for a while. So there were periods of intermittent sobriety, but I've never really been a drinker or um, I've never really used any other substances. It's been mainly that. Um, kind of like half my life, so, uh, and it's only recently, I mean, well, not recently, but sp spiraled, you know, um, right before this case, you know, the cases in 2018, 2019. Not saying I think that it was a good idea, um, but to be, to be on meth, but um, I didn't realize that it was a problem until, until then. Until you ended up on Probation, until or? I until I got locked up, yeah, in 2018, 2019, until that relationship with um, with Michelle kind of brought it to light, you know. Mm -hmm. She was using, I was using, and it just kind of was just a, a a whirlwind of just terrible, terrible addictive behaviors. So, obviously, you were granted numerous opportunities for treatment. While on probation, um, um, it looks like one. 
Okay. So which which program did you actually enter into? I went to First Step. Okay. And how long were you there? Um, I was there four, four and a half months. Okay. But you were unsuccessful in completing that. Why? I graduated in treatment and outpatient I had a hard time with. So would that be the more of the transition phase to aftercare phase? Yeah. Yeah, sober living and, uh, and, and yeah, classes in outpatient, yes. Okay. So uh, what happened? I think uh, I wasn't ready. I should have stayed in. I realized I sh that's one of the biggest regrets probably the last four or five years. I should have stayed there. I just wasn't ready. You know, I got in there and I was, because um, I think I'd done eight months in jail and then I got to the program and I was just a little, um, a little too short-sighted about, you know, being free or whatever and, and uh, I should have stayed there longer. Um, that's my biggest regret. I should have been there. Because um, I got to transitional housing, I got to sober living, and uh, and the program, and got overwhelmed with, you know, I got to get a, you know, I just got overwhelmed, and I and I, you know, I got a job pretty quickly, but then didn't realize that I needed to take care of my, you know, my substance abuse problem. Um, so I got, you know, overwhelmed, and then, and uh, yeah, and started using again. So, how, what does that look like in terms of? Were you continuing to associate with individuals who were using, or how, I mean, how do you make that connection? Um, I had um, no, honestly, I just went where I knew there were some drugs, and and uh, I got you know stressed out from everything, and because uh, I did, I um, I'm not sure. Yeah, in that assessment, it says you know companionship kind of high, but uh, I did cut off everybody that I associated with when I was using and uh, and so yeah I just I was stressed out and um, you know uh, and I, yeah and I went and I just and I kind of and I just relapsed I don't you know um, I don't particularly know why I, I think I had enough coping mechanisms I don't think I had I think so if I contradict myself, I think maybe the community I could have I could have immersed myself in it a little bit more in a positive setting. Um, I think I had the coping mechanisms. I don't think I had the um, or um, allowed myself to be around a community of people that was going to support me when I was struggling like that. So I think that could have been uh, the biggest factor possibly. So, it's, so if I'm hearing this correctly, it sounds like maybe you had the tools for treatment. You just chose not to use them or did not implement them. Is that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So while you've been in prison, it appears in, Ju in July, um, a clinical substance use assessment was completed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a copy of that assessment. Um, however, it looks like your CAT plan suggests residential level treatment. Okay. Is that, does I that sound not, accurate? I have not gotten a lot of uh, correspondence from a caseworker. I think I've seen her once. Yeah, so, but I haven't seen that information yet. Okay, all right. Uh, which also brings me to another uh, another point. Uh, the board did not receive an institutional progress report um, from corrections. Um, however, uh, I do note in our records that you do not have any disciplinaries. You remain disciplinary free. Is that accurate? Okay. Um, I also note that you, we did not receive a board packet from you. Um, did you, did What's you receive? Packet? A packet to complete for this hearing. Were you okay? All right. I just wanted to to find out whether or not you just chose not to send one in, or if you did not receive it. So you're saying you did not receive a board no. packet to complete? My my case was Sergeant Thompson. I think I think I've met with her like once. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I during my preparation, I think I was able to kind of fill in a lot of the gaps, but some of these questions okay. would traditionally be addressed through a board packet you would have had an opportunity to provide the information to us in writing so oh, okay. so just so you're aware okay um, okay um, so what have you been doing um, actually let me step back do uh, I was curious because it has you has you listed as a certain level of mental health have you been engaged with the mental health unit here 
you have not been participating in mental health? No, I had an incident in February uh, when I was in county. Oh, okay, maybe that's that. Maybe that's what I'm seeing. So what? What exactly? Um, uh, I attempted. Okay. All right. Is it? You attempted suicide. Is yeah. that? Okay. All right. So have you been um, seeing mental health for treatment for depression? Um, I was on uh, an uh, antidepressant in, in uh, Salt Lake County, and uh, um, I took it for four months. It did help, um, but I, I requested to be taken off of it. Um, I, it was a good tool, and I, um, I don't believe I, like, uh, that I needed it. Um, I, I feel pretty good now. I just, there was a lot going on when I got arrested, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, have you ever had a diagnosis, a mental health diagnosis in the past? On like 2011. Okay. And w what was that? Uh, for? Um, I think it was, uh, I think it was depression. So did you take medication at that time as well? Yeah, for, for a short time. Did you find that beneficial? Back then, no. So when you're talking about these different stints of sobriety or remaining free of drugs, um, what did you find that was successful that worked for you? Um, it was the community of people, the, the amount of support that I found. Um, uh, the, like the uh, amazingly, like incredible amount of resources that was available to me when, mm -hmm. um, yeah, if I just stayed sober, you know, stayed sober, um, and you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I like, I you know, I see it now, and that's what I truly regret that uh, not availing, you know, simply just availing myself to some of those resources. Um, uh, yeah, and you know, the fact that uh, I'm still young, you know, I feel like I could still turn it, you know, still turn around. It's getting close, but I could still turn it around. Um, and do something worthwhile, you know. So tell me about your family support or your your support system, I should say. Um, it's not right. That's not that great. Um, most of my family has passed away. Um, I recently talked to my father for the first time in like seven years, uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and, yeah, I talk to my sister kind of regularly, but they're not... Uh, wouldn't call them part of my support system. They could be, maybe. Um, but yeah, it would be a uh, support system. I have I have a few friends out there that are still uh, sober. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, when I'm when I'm uh, in uh, relapse or you know active addiction, I don't really want to be around them. You know, to be not that I drag them down, but you know, I think there's a. a, a underlying uh, air of shame, you know, that I carry that I don't want to really bring around them, you know. So is that something you think you could deal through, deal with with mental health treatment or? Yeah. Um, is it something you want to deal with or yeah. you think you need to deal with? I think, yeah, I think I do need to deal with it. And I think, um, uh, I truly, so I truly like residential treatment and, um, you know, Finding a finding a true community that I can latch onto that can you know support me. Um, actually, just after this board hearing, I meet with uh, um, some church members. I've been going to uh, addiction recovery program. I'm just about to do step. I don't know. I've been to all twelve meetings. So um, so do uh, they have a reentry? Um, brother and sister Treff, they or brother and sister Layton. I don't know. Um, but they, you know, they're going to help me with some resources, depending on what happens here. You know, uh, as soon as I know a timeline, they'll be able to help me contact some um, treatment centers, or, you know, if I don't get treatment, you know, depending on what happens here, they'll be able to help me out. So I was kind of relying heavily on that. Um, and I have uh, one friend out there; she's going to uh, help me, you know, send some letters out and see where I can uh, fit in, you know. So let me let me tell you a little bit about kind of um, at, 
I'm one of five board members, okay? Any vote um, that comes from the board requires a majority vote, okay? Um, I am, um, the reason we have this hearing today is because of our hearing schedule, okay? It's, um, it's an original hearing that's designed through administrative rule to kind of determine where we go next. Um, it's not necessarily a parole grant, it's right. kind of to figure out what, what we need to do in the future, okay? Um, given the, the potential charges uh, related to Ms. Harris's death, um, you know, my recommendation, I'm, I'm more inclined to continue um, any kind of decision um, based on the fact that there are charges that are currently in screening with the district attorney. Okay. okay. And what that usually looks like is we do a paper review. So we will pull the file, check the cases, you know, um, have adult probation and parole report to us um, the status of any potential charges. Okay. Um, now, I, I mean, I'll be very honest. You have an expiration date. Um, your expiration date, so the longest the board has jurisdiction, is April 10th, 2032. Um, and I'm not suggesting that we would hold you. We're not going to hold you indefinitely. Uh, clearly, something has to occur um, in, a, in a, a fairly timely manner, um, you know, uh, in terms of any kind of screening of new charges. But again, um, the seriousness of those charges, obviously the board would choose to wait to, d to determine what an outcome would be. Um, generally speaking, the, the board does not release individuals usually when there are charges being screened, okay? Right. Um, so I just want to be very upfront with you on that. Okay. Um, usually what we'll do is we'll review it every 90 days, um, you know, and at some point the board's going to have to make a decision one way or the other of how we move forward, okay? But we also recognize the complexity of, of the potential charges and, and we don't know all the factors that are being considered, but um, this is an incident that occurred this year that clearly the board would like to find find out what the ultimate determination is um, from the district attorney's office. Um, so, you know, even though your guidelines, um, February of 2024, you know, it may be in your interest to try and get into any type of uh, lengthy substance use program that would satisfy your your cap requirement, okay. okay. Um, also your cap requirement is to complete MRT, which is kind of more of the cognitive behavioral treatment that um, we were speaking about at the beginning of this hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just don't want you sitting idle right. um, while you're waiting for the board to make a decision. I think that there are some things that you can engage in and, and hopefully have taken the initiative to do so. It sounds like you have at least enrolled in this addic addiction recovery course, okay. Um, you know, and if appropriate, um, you know, maybe to engage mental health as needed, if, if you think that's appropriate, okay. Um, is there, uh, the, probably the first paper review, obviously, with your sentencing guideline, um, we'll be doing that before January of 2024. We'll probably do it within the next 90 days. Okay. Okay. Um, did it, do you have any questions about that process or maybe what I'll be recommending? Um, yeah, I guess what does that, what does a paper review entail and like how would that influence your recommendation? Okay, so the, my so my recommendation to the board would be that we don't grant you a release date, that we don't grant a rehearing date, that we essentially don't make any kind of decision regarding your release. Um, the, the, my recommendation would be that we hold any decision and that we wait, check for pending cases in 90 days, okay. and then determine what happens there. If, in fact, charges are filed, then um, the board would likely schedule a rehearing, and we would continue to track the status of, of any pending new case, okay? If, um, in fact, charges are declined, um, then the board would probably schedule a rehearing to meet with you again to determine what you've completed, where we're at, um, and what your release plan would look like, okay? Okay. So um, did, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So I want to make it very clear, though, I'm only one of five, and that may not ultimately be the vote of the entire board, okay? okay? But I think it's probably more likely that that would occur, um, given the nature of, of 
the potential pending charges. Okay. So is there anything that we have not covered that you would like the board to be aware? No? Okay. No. Um, I did want to give you an opportunity. Again, we may have, um, you know, the victim of your current um, conviction cases online. Is there anything that you want to share, um, you know, if they, if they happen to be listening to this hearing, or what are your thoughts on that? And if not, that's, that's okay as well. Yeah. Um, I thought about this a lot, and uh, um, it's not inappropriate. I speak directly to her. Uh, I just want to tell Michelle that uh, I am sorry, and I, she did a lot for me. Um, she pulled me out of a really deep depression uh, after my mother passed, and uh, and I didn't and I didn't do a lot, if anything, to help her, and uh, and I dragged her down in my addiction, and uh, and those those two incidents, she probably thought she was gonna die, and um, and that and that really. And that's awful, and I feel terrible about it, and I think and I pray about it a lot. And um, I just want her to know that I'm sorry. And, uh, and I haven't been in a position to pay the restitution, um, but I, I think about that a lot too, and, I, and I'll do the best I can um, when I get out to rectify that as well. So. It, it sounds like you're willing to pay. I know that that was determined through a restitution hearing. Yeah. So what you're probably going to see from the board on that case is um, because it was determined, we'll probably return it to the sentencing court so that they can forward that to the Office of State Debt Collection. Okay. Um, but it's certainly in your interest to get that paid off as, uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, the, the history of domestic violence in these cases, there are a lot of individuals who struggle with addiction, and it doesn't rise to the level of domestic violence that your cases have. Yes. Um, you know, it may be premature for me to ask because you haven't completed treatment um, related, but um, why do you think your aggression or that level of violence occurs with you? I think it has to do with the deep-seated um, kind of feeling of insecurity that I have with myself. That uh, and uh, I feel like I have dealt with it. Um, maybe not all the way, but that's something that I that I struggle with a lot. Um, and a lot of and a lot of grief and and um, mostly anger at myself. I think that I project on other people that. Um, And not and not every and not everybody, but mostly just the people that that I'm um, that I'm in a relationship with, and I and I think uh, that I have to deal with that. Have you taken any steps to address to address um, that, or have you had any treatment in the past to address that? Um, yeah, uh, I um, completed a course in ACEs, and there was a. Um, um, I completed MRT in, in first step as well, but I think I'll, um, you know, like you guys recommend, I'll, I'll go through it again with maybe a fresh lens, yeah. Okay. And um, albeit it's not outlined in your case action plan, um, I think it would be um, beneficial for you to enroll in all domestic violence related treatment, okay which has a focus on victim empathy and victim impact um, in addition to anger management. Uh, I think that there's probably a lot that can you can learn from. You know, while you're using um, substances and things, we have a lot of individuals, again, who use substances who don't act out with the, the level of aggression and violence that you have in the past, okay? So, um, and you may see that as an actual expectation, even though it may not be part of your case action plan. Okay. So um, if you can, you know, connect with your case manager and, and, and try to see what you can get enrolled in. Okay. You know, I recognize I'm talking to you about a lot of different things, 
um, but you know you can work with them on how you would prioritize or if you can do some things concurrently or yeah okay okay all right so um, again you're a young man um, you know you will be released from prison eventually and so you know our job is to ensure that there's you know public safety the community is safe um, that you have reduced your risk um, before the board considers a release okay. and so um, I think it's in everyone's interest for you to just actively engage in all that's available to you yep okay I agree okay all right so uh, with that is there any anything else so what you can expect is I will go back I'm gonna listen this hearing go back through your records um, and I will write up a recommendation and route that to, to my colleagues um, we'll come up with a decision it will probably be a few weeks before an official decision is entered um, that decision is available um, you know to any of your support system it can be available it'll be available online and then you'll also see receive a written copy okay, okay? Yep. all right so I um, appreciate your presence today appreciate um, uh, everyone's participation or, or attendance today and and with that we'll go ahead and conclude this hearing